The Toyota lower kingpins are renowned for coming loose and failing out there on the trails. So in this video, I'm going to be doing something I've never actually done before, and that is I'm going to be bracing up this knuckle so that we can eliminate that failure point. Here at Mad Mat 4 Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four-wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications. So on a right-hand drive vehicle, this component is on the left-hand side of the vehicle, and on a left-hand drive vehicle, well, this will be on the right-hand side of the vehicle. So what we've got going on here is this side here is taking the drag link from the steering box, and then this side is going at the, behind the front diff, and it's the tie rod between the two wheels. So your steering input comes here, turns like that, and turns the two wheels. All right, so fairly simple. Now, what happens with this design, there's four studs traditionally mounted up inside here. Okay, and then they have an, a, a taper lock washer. Now I'll explain how these work in two seconds because a lot of people don't understand the idea of those. So you have these four studs in here, these taper cone washers or cones in here, and then that's all tightened up. And that works for the most part, but the moment we start putting larger wheels on or doing a lot of extended off-road, rough roads and that, these are renowned for coming loose because of the loads that's being transferred through this area here. And so there's a number of things that people do to, to keep them running. One is they upgrade the studs, um, they do things like that. Well, today we're gonna weld the whole lot up because this is going on the race car. So if you were doing what I'm about to do now on a road registered vehicle, well, you need to make sure that you're allowed to do that and that it's wise to do that on a road registered vehicle. But this is going on a race car and for that application, this is perfect. Now I'll answer one other question that you may have is, can you disassemble the knuckle when this no longer comes out? And the answer is a simple, yes you can. One of the challenges you may have is getting that kingpin bearing off of here if ever you need to. But the reality is in my vehicle and off as, as an off-road race car, this has probably only ever got to do maybe five to 10,000 kilometers in the rest of its life. So I'm probably never going to pull it apart again. I'll put it back, to, put it together, grease her up and away we go. Now, I also want to give a big shout out to a mate of mine because I, this came up on a, on a discussion with uh, another fellow, Matt, who's races. And um, so I got in touch with my mate, Benji, who runs Ramp Customs here in Australia. And I said, hey, Benji, we need a kit to do this. And he's like, yep, Matt, I'll sort that out. So he's, he's uh, this is, I think, the first kit he ever made that we're going to be installing in here today. And, um, and yeah, he's given me the kit because it's the first one. It was my idea. And there you go. Well, that's just how that works. So what this is going to do, I'll just get that. Oh, let, I'll talk to you quickly about these cone washers. See how this cone washer has this slot in it. Now, the way these work, and I explain this to you because a lot of people don't understand it, and they'll go and remove these cone washers. They're really important to leave in there. When you tighten this cone washer down, and the taper sits down in there like that, when we tighten and force this cone washer down by tightening up the nut, that cone washer now clamps onto the stud and is forced onto the outer surface you know, of, of this metal here. So what it does is it, that cone washer removes any movement between the stud and this arm, provided that you know, there's no stretch or the bolt nor the nut doesn't come loose or anything like that. In, in, if it stays in good working order, that is going to become essentially one piece of metal across there. That's why those cone washers are so important. Quick tip for getting them out, because a lot of guys struggle with this. Get a brass drift, so a piece of soft metal, and put it on the end of the stud and give it a really good sharp hit. One or two of those good hits and that'll all come loose. Okay, so back to putting this kit in here. So I'll just get that out of the way. And then I'll show you how it's going to roughly assemble and then I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So this 
oh, better do it the right way. That's going to go down into there like that. This one is going down into there like that. Then we're going to weld all of this up. Now you can see how we've taken and put steel to really engage this arm into the whole knuckle housing. That's going to make it extremely strong once it's all welded up. Now the procedure I've never done before is, is we're going to be welding cast material. These have all been cast, so there's a procedure for that. We're going to be using a standard MIG welding machine to do the welding. You can get cast rods and so on. But the process that's really important is what we call a preheat and a post-heat process. So we're going to be cooking this in the Weber and warm it up before we weld it. And then we're going to do a post-heat treatment to cool it down really, really slowly. And that'll assure that the welds don't create a weakness within the, the cast materials. But before we get to that, I've got to do some grinding and some marking out. So I'm going to get out of the pretty shirt get the dirty shirt on and we'll start uh, doing some work, eh? So first thing we're going to do now is prepare it for welding. And so what I'm going to do is mark up the areas that need to be ground and cleaned up. Some of these areas just need to be cleaned up so we've got fresh metal. Some areas I'm actually going to chamfer them so I can get a nice penetration with the weld. Okay, so let's get this together. I'm just going to stick a stud in there just to ensure I'm roughly lined up. Okay, so what I'm planning to do is weld along here. So I'm just going to chamfer, just going to chamfer that face and then a bit along here as well. And then, so I'll put a nice weld through right through that join there. And I'm going to take some metal off there. And I think I'll probably take a little bit off here as well. And again, I'll just have another weld along through there. Okay, now we'll let's slide these into place. find out where we're going to sit that and then we'll just mark down there and up the back there just, that's just purely so I just know where I'm going to clean and, and grind on that side yeah so we'll just well you can clean the whole lot up if you wanted to doesn't matter I'm going to weld up through there, up through there, you get the idea, okay. Alright, so now, time to grind. So let me show you how we've ground this out. So you can see how I've opened all of that up. So I'm going to fill that all with weld in due course. And then same over here. That's, those welds there aren't really the critical welds because we're going to put the studs and bolts and all that back in here. But, you know, you, all the extra weld. So and then I've cleaned up the arms there where the braces are going to sit. I've cleaned up the side of the knuckles in there where the braces are going to sit as well. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put these studs back in here um, and torque them back up to spec, 71 foot-pounds for, for 80 series um, kingpins. And then we're going to start cooking things. Okay, so that is all assembled the way Toyota intends it to be assembled. But now we're going to strengthen it, mad mattify it. How about that for a word? So what we've got to do now is the preheating process. So over here I've got my Weber barbecue fired up and we're going to stick this in there and let that warm up to oh, probably an hour. And yeah, once it's stinking hot, then it's time to weld it. So let's go and put it in the Weber. 
Righto, so most of you guys can probably do this without your wife finding out about it, but unfortunately for me, Mrs. Mad Matt's filming this. <laughs> All right, so it's a bit, my, my web is a little bit small for the job, but it'll work. Okay, so, well, it says 200 degrees Celsius at the moment. It's flat out. So we'll leave that for an hour and cook our parts. There's a cooked knuckle. That's 250 degrees at the moment. You can actually see the bluing. Can you see the bluing in there? I'm not sure if that's showing on camera, but that's how hot this whole thing is right now. She's, she's cranking. All right, so without burning myself, what I'm gonna do, Pretty colours. That's beautiful colours. So what I'm going to do first up is put these in and tack them into place. There she goes. Lovely, lovely. I've got the MIG welder set flat out. So she's just going to lay it in there. I want lots of penetration. With, you know, and, and just lots of bite going on, so. Well, there you go. That's uh, laid down some heat, that's for sure. Anyway, look, if you want to get hold of this, give Benji a call at Ramped Customs, as he says, because normal is just the average. Anyway, he's got a cool range of merch and stickers and all that, but he does these kits along with a lot of other fabrication kits, tabs, whatever, whatever, whatever that you might be looking for. Anyway, check out his Facebook page. We'll have some links down below. So what's gonna happen with this now? Well, I'm gonna go and post heat it. So it's going back in the Weber a little bit more cooking, and I will very slowly over the next eight, 12 hours, slowly drop the heat down and cool this down really, really slowly. When I basically get on the lowest setting of the Weber and it's sat there for say half an hour, I'm then gonna wrap it up in a blanket and let it cool down. So I guess, well, it's about four, four o'clock in the afternoon now, I guess by tomorrow morning this should be cooled down. That's how slow Benji's told me to make the cooling down process. So there you go. Some would say that that's now as strong as a patrol one. But I don't know about that. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trail.